We have replaced one power athlete with another one, of course. We talk about from the superstar of the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Ty Weasley, hello, big boy. What's up? How are we doing, fellas? Thanks oh, for having me. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm flat. I'll tell you why. Not only... I'm flat because I don't get to see you for a little while with that hamstring, but I had you as my uh, fantasy captain. And when you dropped eight points in five minutes, I was getting really excited. I was already going to think about how I was going to spend the money for winning NBL fantasy. How are you? How's the leg? Yeah, the leg's all right. Uh, a little bit more serious than I had anticipated in the mm -hmm. game. But, um, you know, I'm healing well and uh, excited to be back on the court. Hopefully soon. Hopefully I don't sit out too long. Now, I know, obviously, you got out in the first quarter, which was disappointing to yourself as well as the team. But how did it feel watching your team on the sidelines and them getting the win? Yeah, the, I mean, the atmosphere was crazy. It was a sold-out crowd. And the NBL, they know what they're doing. They, you know, they, they set this matchup up knowing that it'd, it'd be a big draw. And so to get out there in front of a sold-out crowd, my old team, and to win... You know, there's nothing better than that. You obviously played in front of, at this stadium, of course, for Melbourne United in front of big crowds before. But any time there's a crosstown rob, we see well, the little and one, but that was probably essentially, unfortunately, end for a little while for Ty Weasley. But in that stadium with the vibe and the atmosphere around the two Melbourne teams, is it, is it a little bit different to what you traditionally felt when you're playing for Melbourne United in front of big crowds? Yeah, different in the fact that most of, most of the fans were going for the other team. I'm not used to that. <laughs> Um, but there were there was a lot of positive signs you know, and a lot of noise for for us when we made some good plays. So that was exciting. Hopefully we stole some of their fans, and and we'll see them at our home game. <laughs> so look, I'm right now. I know we're looking at these highlights, and um, it was they, they were incredible. You know this this point guard of yours, man. Talk to us about Robeson hitting these big shots. So. I talked to him today. He, he wanted me to make sure that you guys corrected his name. His name is Robertson. Okay. Robertson? Okay. Yeah, so that's the first thing he wants everybody to know. Okay. Second thing, you better know that he can shoot the ball. <laughs> hey, we know that. We know okay. that. We know that. <laughs> you know, he wants to put the league on notice because he's he can go. 28 points for Mitch Creek as well. And if there's been a downfall in his game, or at least a weakness, it's been his outside jump shot. Four or five from the three-point line. We see a couple there. One on a pull-up three that he's dribbled down and jacked it, which we've never seen before. And then, of course, the two clutch threes late. That... Now, there is a slight concern about him hitting that because I think that's the one reason he might not be in the NBA. If he proves he's got the range on a regular basis... Hey, let's not talk about him leaving oh. the Phoenix, all right? <laughs> Mitch Creek is... He played a phenomenal game. He, he and, did. And, and he's a complete player. Yeah. You can't... You can't and, and that's what makes him so hard to guard. You can't... If you scoot up on him, he's going to go by you. He's physical. He can get you in the post. And now that he's hitting that shot, he's going to be unguardable. Was he headbutting people at training today? Because I've seen an Instagram post of him in a training <laughs> dude with bloodied, uh, bloodied eyes. You know, <laughs> these two guys were trying to kiss and they got too close and, <laughs> and, and broke each other's faces. So. You, you know what's interesting to me? I'm looking over your resume, right? A lot of people may not know. One, I respect you so much because the way you go about your business on a nightly basis, I had to do research on you. <laughs> First of all, we've never <laughs> been on this panel and actually had a player on the panel, with me here at least. So for you to be here is a joy, to be honest with you, right? So I had to check out, do my research on you. <laughs> hey, you know, you know he's, he's you know, made... Sir, I don't come up with paper. Hey. I never come up on this show with paper. When he's well, done research, hey, you should feel like special. Five pages here. Let's <laughs> see what, what he's saying. got. Let's, right? let's so I it. say, okay, WAC Player of the Year, former WAC Player of the Year, Utah State graduate, you see... Pretty smart and articulate, so I'm sure you got your degree, which is very important. Yep. Your freshman yep. year, 10 and 4, sophomore season, 12 and 6, junior year, 14 and 7, senior year, 15 and 8. You got better each year, and that's exactly what you want to see your student athlete do every year. Then you go to the Netherlands, you know, you worked out for Minnesota as well. Yeah. Then you went to France, <laughs> then you went back to the Netherlands, then you hit. The NBL. I love when someone tells someone else the Breakers, their story. two years in a row, <laughs> then United twice, then New Zealand again, then the Melbourne. Do, the Phoenix. And in the offseason, you play New Zealand NBL. Now, looking at this, when you hit the NBL, do you realize United has always been your arch rivals? I, well, that is crazy. I know now. <laughs> yeah, like, man, this is very impressive. This is, what, nine years of playing pro? Yeah. Yeah, very, very fortunate, you know, and blessed. Talk to me about the mindset, because, you know, one side of it, you've been an import, 
okay? We know, well, I know, but a lot of people don't really understand the mindset of an import. And what's impressed me even more is that now, you know, for, for four or five seasons, you were local. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But your mindset didn't change. You know, a lot of times guys, they get relaxed. They take their foot off the brake, so to speak, if you have an opportunity to be a local because there's less pressure on you. If losing goes down, it's usually looked at and the import is the blame. Talk to me about the mindset when you were an import and how it carried over to you as when you played as a local. Well, like you said, you, losses you get blamed for. And when it comes down to winning time, you go to your imports, you know, you go to your bread and butter. And so to, to come in as a local, that was a, a luxury I, I really enjoyed, but I didn't want to get comfortable. And that's, I think, why I left New Zealand the first time. You know, I, was, I, I enjoyed my time. We won a championship. Then second year, we went to the grand final and lost to Perth. But I was playing, I was coming off the bench behind a legend in Mick, Mick of Okona. And I didn't want to stay comfortable and, and be a backup. I wanted to grow and I wanted to challenge myself. And I wanted to be a starter. And as a local starter, I thought that would be a, a, a good achievement. And fortunately, I, I was a local for the first five years. And now, this year, I got, I got a contract as an import, and I'm proud of that. It can that be is dope. That is, that's not easy to do. It, no, it's not. I agree. That is not easy to do. That's why he's the grown man. I always joked about it. People looked at it as a joke. But I was dead serious. You play the game like you got a family to feed. Like, every possession... I'm going to make you feel it on offense and on defense. You're not scoring. I'm locking you up, and I'm going to bust your ass on the other end. That's why he's the grown man. I got nothing but respect. Uh, you know what else we love? What else on we love? On this show? History. And okay. Sunday at Melbourne Arena, it's going to be history because South East Melbourne Phoenix will play their first ever home game. The Brisbane Bullets are in town, and a great opportunity to get there. Pack the joint out. They're one and zip on the road with the win yeah. last week. But this Sunday, going to be a huge one, of course. Free kids with every paying adult. It's going to be huge. Mitch Creek was outstanding last week. The Bullets we'll get to in a moment. They were great. Nathan Sobey's first half in particular with five threes. But three o'clock, Melbourne Arena this weekend. Make sure you get there. History to be made. South East Melbourne Phoenix will play their first home game.